you guys don't understand the preparation that I had to do in order to film this video from my bed, but I'm literally never doing this again. I'm never doing this again. Hello, everybody. Welcome to my channel. I've decided that I'm going to change my setting a little bit and I'm going to move over to my bed because it's late. It's like after a certain time, I won't even say what time because I don't know how long it's going to take me to edit this video. The name of this episode is Get Me Off This Roller Coaster. Let's just get into the review. So Bentley is preparing to take his test for his learner's permit so that he can start driving. Here with Leah and her sister Victoria has invited her over to the house so that they can discuss the next steps for their dad. Victoria is talking to Leah about what's going to happen to their dad once he gets out of detox. He needs to be in a long-term facility. The issue, though, is that Victoria has been looking all around and she can't find a place that's, one, reasonably priced because money's an, you know, money is an issue, and also one that takes his insurance. Leah is saying to her here that, you know what, no matter what, we're going to figure it out. Corey calls Cheyenne on the phone and says, hey, I need to speak to you about something in person while Ryder's not around while she's in school. And so Cheyenne's like, okay, no problem, whatever. Corey lets Cheyenne know, and I mean lets her know, that he is taking Ryder for the entire Christmas break. And he's already bought the tickets for the plane. He's already let his family know. He's already let Ryder know. And Cheyenne's basically the last person to know. Cheyenne's like, um, excuse you? We didn't discuss this. She has a huge problem with how he addressed the situation. Cheyenne says basically that she didn't like the way that Corey handled the situation and kicked him the hell out. Sean and Jade have changed Chloe's school. She was in a private school. They switched her to public school. I have no idea why the hell y'all did that. Okay, I should have left her in private school. Jade says that, you know, Chloe is having issues in school. The kids are picking on her. She's coming home saying she hates it. She says she's talked to counselors. She's talked to teachers and she can't get any answers. So immediately the first thing that her and Sean think to do is to take Chloe out of school and homeschool her. Who's schooling her? Chloe literally reads better than the both of you combined. But I'm just saying y'all two are supposed to be homeschooling her. Alrighty then. Jade and Sean are here attempting to homeschool her at the same time, giving her two different types of directions. Sean gets frustrated and he's like, I'll just go in the freaking room then. Guys, I really thought it was going to be more than three episodes after the wedding that you guys would start back with your shenanigans. But you know, guys, like I told you, I've been watching this show for a million years and I know what I'm talking about. And I knew that that honeymoon lovey dovey mess would not last. They're already arguing. They were arguing before they got married. Why would that change after? Little Chloe, oh girl, I'm so sorry. Up to Brianna, and she says, in the past year, this is really hurting my hands, I'm sorry. Um, I didn't mean to sound so low, but damn, my hand's cramping. Anyway, um, I'm doing this again, I'm sorry. Don't get used to this background. But anyway, <laughs> Brianna says that over the past year, she bought a new house, and that means that her and her daughters are a distance away from Brittany, her sister, and Roxanne, her mom. Brianna says throughout her whole life, it's been her, her sister, and her mom. Her mom has been that, you know, solid force in her life. But Brianna says over the years, her and Brittany have learned that their mom has lied about some pretty big things. So the secret came out on Family Therapy 2016. And ma'am, I'm really sorry. I did not, I didn't review that. Roxanne admitted to Brittany that who she thought was her biological father was not her biological father. Brianna says that when she wanted to reach out to her father, she found out that Roxanne was in contact with him and didn't tell them. Brianna says that even though they love Roxanne, the lies have really made them look at her in a different light. Shirley's here with Brianna. Brianna's explaining to Shirley that Ro Roxanne, or her mom, has been acting very, very strange lately. And Shirley's like, is it something she said? Is it something she did? And Brianna explains that she's acting out. She actually got into an argument 
with Brittany at a restaurant where she threw water at her? Roxanne, what's going on, ma'am? Are you okay? Are you okay? Because something ain't right. And I know you're sporadic. Was that you that jumped on top of the table or am I imagining things? Oh, so, like doing sporadic, weird, crazy things is not necessarily totally outside of the realm of who you are and what you do. I'm wondering what's going on now. Brianna explains that she's also calling them and cursing them out. So when that water situation happened with Brittany, because Shirley asked, what did Brittany do? Brittany didn't do anything. Brittany has self-control because the kids were there. And so, you know, she didn't mollywop her across the restaurant floor because the girls were there. Brianna says that Brittany is fed up. She has their mom blocked. She is freaking over it. Brianna says that Brittany is getting married this year, and that's what we need to be focusing on. So Shirley asks if they've had a conversation with Roxanne about this. Shirley goes on to explain that, you know, now that you guys are out of the house, Roxanne has no focus. She had y'all to focus on, and now she's pretty much by herself, which leads her to have to, you know, let it out. And Shirley says now she has all this free time and she can't keep stuff bottled up anymore. Brianna says that something has to change because she's not going to allow Roxanne to be acting like that in front of her children. So Brianna contacts Brittany on the phone and lets her know, hey, let's have a meetup with mom to talk about the situation. And Brittany is down. So Brianna says, I'll go ahead and I'll text mom. Now Roxanne is in some random parking lot saying they have no idea. And guys, I want to say some things, okay? I'm just going to say this quickly. I never intend on insulting anyone or making anyone feel bad in my videos, okay? it This video is all just a recap. I just usually just say whatever comes to mind. I will try in the future to be more cautious about the things that I make fun of or the things that I say that I truly have no bad intentions. So please forgive me. And I also, also, I keep in mind that when I'm doing these recaps, that these are real people. These are real mothers. These are real children. I will not disrespect Roxanne um, by saying she looks like a scarecrow because that's not nice. Okay. That's really not nice because obviously she's going through some stuff right now and ain't nobody perfect. Bentley, because I'm not calling him Benny, damn it. Bentley passed his learner's permit test. So now he's going to be driving with approved family members. He will not, however, be driving with Ryan right away. First of all, Ryan just got out of the halfway house about three months ago. And right after he got out of the halfway house, he stopped for speeding. So they put him on a restricted license for an entire year. And Macy claims that he's sober. If you are sober, Ryan, please stay that way. Please. I've been rooting for you for years. Ryan is somebody I have a, a soft spot for because I just adore Bentley and I, I like Macy's family. You know what I'm saying? So I want Ryan to get right for them. So, and for himself, obviously, but also for Bentley, you know? So please, please stay sober. I know it's hard. I know it's not easy, but do it for your kids. Cause I know you have a lot. Is my hair a mess? Okay. You know what? Do it. Anyway. Now, Cheyenne is discussing the situation with Corey wanting to take Ryder. Her mom is here, Margaret. Arl, Arl, I'd be wanting to say Arl. R. Kyle Lynn. Girl, could you just pick a name? Can you just freaking pick a name? Because it's very hard to say. Anyway, I'm just going to say Cheyenne's sister and Zach are discussing the situation. Zach says that we live by the motto of doing what's best for the children. And Cheyenne explains that she just doesn't like how he went about it. And Margaret's like, she's not going to be with us for the holidays. And, you know, Margaret says to Cheyenne, you know, when you need money for these parties, he's giving you money. Like, he's a good dad. Cheyenne is not, she's saying that she's not questioning his fatherhood. She's saying that they don't parent like that. And that's not how you, you know, come to an agreement about what's going to happen with a child that you both share. Cheyenne comes to the decision, if I say anything slow, it's because I've bumbled over it five times annoying as hell. Cheyenne is going to let Ryder decide what she wants to do for the holiday. She's going on this trip because that's what she'd like to do. She's excited about it. 
Corey knew what he was doing when he told her about the trip before Cheyenne. You know what? People are not as stupid as you think they are. You know damn well when you tell a kid something and get them excited about it, then their mind is going to be set towards that. Anyway, Corey, you got your way this time, but don't do that again. All that teaching has got Jade needing some adult time. So she's out here with her friends, Karam. That's a pretty name. And I forgot the other girl's name. I'm really sorry to tell you. And yes, the only reason why I knew her name is because it's on the screen. Don't judge me. Don't judge. And of course, she talks to them about the homeschooling. So the both of these folks admit that homeschooling is hard. And that quickly, Chloe's going back to school. Should have never took her out of school, dummy. Bentley passed the permit test. I just want you guys to know, I was tempted to put on my damn cartoon today because it's much easier to do a voiceover and just be over here chilling. But I need to get back on camera. <laughs> I've gotten very lazy with my channel. And I know sometimes y'all just really want to see me on camera, okay? I will be on camera more often, I promise. So that's why I'm still here. I'm struggling for y'all. I'm just letting y'all know. But anyway. Leah says that she has found a long-term um, facility for her dad. So today she's going to pick her dad up from detox and she's going to take him to the long-term facility. Leah says this would be a great time to get to know her father. So he's in the car and she's asking him how he is. She seeing that he's a little fidgety over there. So dad says that he is a little fidgety and it's because, you know, he is very apprehensive because he doesn't know what to expect. So Leah explains to her her dad how she felt when she went into treatment, how she didn't want to leave the girls for 30 days, but it was something that was necessary. Her dad says that he feels bad that he was doing pills with her. It was like giving her a stick of dynamite. Oh, that's what you were apologizing for last weekend. Maybe part of it, but wow. Leah says that, you know, once you think you've climbed one mountain, you're just going to keep climbing more and climbing more. And even those of us that aren't addicted, it's the same thing. Like every time you think you've, you've left an obstacle behind, you look and there's another freaking obstacle. Like there's another obstacle right in front of you to trip over that you got to jump over. But it's, it's put there to trip you, to confuse you. But yeah, that's life. So she lets her dad know, you know, now it's up to you. Now you got to take that baton. Leah lets her dad know that recovery really will start when he's on the right track and he's involving himself back into their lives and stuff. That's when everything is going to really start over for him. Leah says that she's very proud of her dad. She's having mixed emotions and now she's dropping him off at the facility. Macy is taking Bentley on his first practice drive and I can't help, I can't help but feel old because all of us should feel old. I'm going to tell you why all of us should feel old. Let me move up. Let me move up so I can talk to y'all. Um, Remember, we were around when Macy was pregnant with this little baby who's driving now. <laughs> He's going to drive before me. Good grief. Brittany and Brianna are waiting for their mom, Roxanne, to appear so they can have this conversation that they really need to have. And I just realized my pop filter is not on my microphone. And I hope it's okay with y'all. Okay? Okay? I hope it's okay with you because um, the video is almost done. Okay? Just just don't. I'll try not, I'll try not to pop my piece too hard. All right? Anyway. Brittany just hopes that Roxanne respects the fact that the kids are there and doesn't act out. Roxanne is here and she's saying that she has anxiety. Menopause is here and everything is hitting her. Brianna asks, is it because you're alone? When we were with you, it was a good distraction. Brianna says that you're in your thoughts and now you're going downhill. And Roxanne admits that she's going downhill. Well, Roxanne gets into traumas that you don't come back from. We all have them. Roxanne says the trauma that she's talking about is drug, drug abuse, drug abuse within her family. Brittany lets Roxanne know that you talk to me like crap and you cross boundaries. Brittany asks Roxanne, how do you feel if we can't come back from traumas that you've caused us? Roxanne is saying that it's the fear of something. I don't, I rewound it twice. I don't know what the hell she's saying, but anyway, she's saying that 
that feeling of being worried that they won't get past the trauma that she's causing is also adding to her issues. I believe that's what she's saying. Sometimes it's very hard to decipher what the hell these people are saying, as you know. Brianna says nothing. She doesn't say much, actually. But Brittany says, At the end of the day, your mental health is doing too much to us, and especially to me. I cannot take it anymore. I agree. And I don't so want then get that. the mental health. You're getting married. I want us to focus on you that. You might not be there if you act like this. Brittany says, You might not be at my wedding if you keep this stuff up. And Roxanne gets angry and says, I can't believe you're bringing this up. Like she does most of the time in a lot of my recaps. Oopsie, sorry. Got to turn me back on. Like she does in most of my recaps that I do, um, including her, she leaves. Roxanne gets angry and she goes out to the car. So Roxanne leaves and Brittany says that she's not taking accountability for anything. Like, what was the whole point of this conversation? It doesn't make any sense. Cheyenne lets Corey know, don't you ever in your life do this again. But yes, Ryder wants to go with you and I'm not going to stop her from going. So fine. A week later is here and the Grinch Corey is here to take Ryder away to Never Neverland. Oh, he's coming back. But anyway, uh, Cheyenne's crying and... It's going to be fine. You had a whole week. Y'all could have celebrated Christmas the week before. I know it's not the same. And I know what he did was wrong. But, you know, sometimes you really have to make the best of situations that are unexpected. Roxanne is out here saying that she cannot believe she said that. Brianna says to Brittany, you knew she was going to act the fool when you brought that up. So now, of course, the orchestrated walk out and walk back in with a box of what? What you got a tackle box for? Brianna asks Roxanne, what is that? Roxanne says, the medication I pay for, Brianna, help yourself. It's a narcotic. It's methadone. You were on drugs? That was freaking, that was freaking mind-blowing, okay? What an episode. There's more drama to come, apparently, on Teen Mom, the next chapter. I thought it was going to be boring, but apparently it's not. Apparently this season is not as boring as I thought it would be. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching my channel. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.